So what are some of the exit strategies? How can we deal with our digital mind extensions that constantly try to persuade us? Well, I, I organized this uh, following a two by two matrix. So either they do the change or we do the change or we change the existing or we create something new. So it's either them, the technology provider, the existing technology providers that change things, or it's we, the public, the existing public that regulates things, for example, uh, or they, the engineers and the entrepreneurs of the, of the future, they create a new technology and there are some on the horizons. Many people talk about the blockchain, for example. So what we know for sure is that Google will not be on the throne forever. No company has been on the throne forever. Same as Facebook and Amazon and so forth. Right. Uh, or last, we kind of like evolve. And uh, our minds basically need to do a leap forward in order to get to a point where we might be able to deal with our digital mind extensions. And that starts with starting to deal with our own mind because, yes. All right, so let's go one by one. Uh, they, that's usually what we are most hit on. They, they provide the technology and they should also then have some corporate responsibility, for example. So let's look at them. The 10 digital individuals, most successful digital individuals that made their money uh, with digital technology have a combined net worth of uh, some hundred, 600, it, it doesn't really matter. But what's important to know that what these Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page and so forth, what they, uh, the money that they manage is the same as about the size of the economy of 40% of the world's country. That means 40% of the world's sovereign democracy have an economy, not like a savings account, an economy that is the same size as what these 10 men, interestingly enough, have in their pocket. Another way of looking at it, it's more than the economy, bigger than the GDP, than the economy of 90% of individual countries. That means 90%. That's under, there are only 20 countries. There are only two, of the 200 countries in the world, there are only 20 that have an economy, a GDP, that's bigger than the cash that these 10 men have in their pocket. So Im imagine they would meet for a party. I mean, that's a lot of power that would be there in the same room. So, so that's the question. Obviously, they have to change it because they, they have a lot of power. What, what do you mean they have a lot of power? Well, for example, uh, there's a lot of power in how you program these persuasive technologies. Think about a search result. Uh, we've seen that just changing the order of, the, of headlines in the search result can affect the voting and the political opinion of undecided voter from 20 in the minimum sense up to 80%. Now, and that's not, that's not, I don't, I don't really manipulate the content or I show you fake news. That's just the order of the headlines and as they appear. Now, uh, and a democratic election is usually on traditionally on average one with a margin of 7%. So if just changing the headlines can affect undecided voters from 20 to 70 up to 80%, well, that is a lot of power. That's very tacit and it's part of the business model. I mean, they have to decide of how they want to rank headlines as they appear. So the power here certainly, and that's, that's one of the questions, like how, how, what can we, what can even the governments of sovereign nations do yeah, if there's a, such an imbalance of power, right? Well, so we go and we tell Facebook, you know, you have to, you have to regulate. For example, election. Let's stay with the topic of elections. And Facebook did. They, they, uh, after the 2016 election in the United States, where it was proven by all secret services that there were uh, international interference in, in the election of the United States that produced many of these technologies. So there was Russian interference, which was proven by several, by several official reports in Congress. Um, then Facebook said, okay, okay, let's see. Let's, we, are, we, are, um, we are starting with an election integrity officer. We're creating this office. And they actually took an ex-CIA agent, which has a lot of experience in these kind of things. But then she resigned after six months of being in a new post. 
Because she then realized, and in her own words, she says, the real problem is that Facebook profits partly by amplifying lies in selling dangerous targeting tools that allow political operatives to engage in a new level of information warfare. Its business model exploits our data to let advertisers aim at us, showing each of us a different version of truth and manipulating us with hyper-customized ads. So that is the official statement. That's why she then resigned and said, look, it's, it's the business model, the attention economy, the persuasive technology. I cannot, I cannot assure that because elections are about changing people's minds. That's what campaigns are about. They try to persuade you to vote for them. And Facebook is extremely, so because that's their business model, right? So that came out of the corporate responsibility goodwill uh, uh, that it was in the aftermath of the 2016 presidential election in the country that created uh, many of the most visible persuasive technologies in the attention economy. Then four years later, a new election came up. And I'm talking a little bit about, but you, so you understand the history here, uh, because elections, especially the, the, the history of elections and social media, gives a good idea about the big data, artificial intelligence, and ethics discussion. So 2020 came around, and in the same year, the founder and CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, declared then that, no, Facebook will not police political speech. Because, well, first of all, it's not Facebook's task. He says Facebook doesn't create content. Facebook just creates a platform where newspapers and other content creators can, individuals can post their content. And there is a freedom of speech that he wants to defend, especially for, for politicians. So in the ramp up for this election, he clearly said, no, we, we, we will not do it. I mean, he also tried. He created, he employed a Facebook, uh, uh, an election integrity officer who then resigned. And then he said, well, I'm, I'm just going to stay out of it. But what he did say, what Facebook will do is invest heavily into technological solutions to curb this. Also because, you know, these, these companies deal with a lot of scale. So he said, well, we've invested in artificial intelligence and other new technologies. And that brings us to the next quadrant is we create new technology. They create new technology in order to technologize our way out of this.